All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earth Master here. 10.35 p.m. California time. November 16th, 2024 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.0. Um, looks like around the California area. This comes after, uh, well, a handful of felt earthquakes here in the last 12 hours or so. Right around the Fontana area. Specifically east it looks like due northeast here of the fontana area right around the red hill uh fault system right up against the mountain ranges uh seeing a couple threes out here today 3.5 earlier about two o'clock and now uh just a uh, couple hours ago a 3.4 again in the same area very shallow earthquake activity underneath this region so uh, uh i'm sure uh a, a few folks out there felt it Here's the DigiVillip map out here across the area. Looks like uh, across west, uh, western areas filling it as well. Even around the uh, Redondo Beach area, Long Beach, uh, for that three-pointer today. I want to check something real quick here. I want to see more info on that fault system here. I was going to pull this up before the update, but uh, that's all right. So it's going to be, let's see, where is that? There we go. Okay. So the specific name of this fault system here, it could even be the, where there's a Red Hill Fault, Sierra Madre Fault Zone. That's a fairly lengthy fault that runs almost, I mean, it runs all the way underneath these mountain ranges or to the south here. Almost looks like it connects here across this fault and then uh, over towards the Malibu Coast Fault. Uh, but specifically, for the Red Hill Fault, let's see if we can find some information on that. Uh, Red Hill, Red Hills. So it looks like we got to make sure we got the right one here. That's going to be Red Hill, uh, Itawanda Fault, it looks like. Um, most, surface, surface, most recent surface rupture there, somewhat recent on the eastern end. Uh, this fault dips to the north, nine kilometers of the uh, Red Hill. Fault is considered to be part of the Cucamonga Fault Zone. That's why I was saying it's a it's a fairly lengthy type fault, uh, as it shows surface rupture more similar to that of the uh, Cucamonga Fault Zone than that to the rest to the uh, rest of the Red Hill Fault. Huh. Uh, magnitudes here roughly around six to seven. It is a thrust fault. So those fault systems here are very capable of producing uh, some larger earthquakes there and more felt compared to a uh, a strike slip type of fault boundary. Uh, but we'll continue to watch it. You know, it's uh, it's interesting activity popping up here for sure. And I'm noticing a handful more earthquakes here around the San Bernardino Mountain Range. That's on the eastern side here of the plate boundary off the San Andreas Fault. A little bit more activity here. Uh, than what I've seen in a little while. Uh, nothing big. Those are all small microquakes out there, but uh, still, it's earthquake activity. And um, there's a there's a handful out there. Uh, the specifically, Los Angeles area, pretty quiet. Malibu area, fairly quiet as well. Uh, we'll see what happens here tonight, but definitely seeing some elevated activity out here. Pretty close here to the San Andreas Fault. And then we got that uh, separate activity there on the eastern side of the plate boundary. Uh, one earthquake up near me outside here. I'm outside of the Chico area. Uh, this earthquake around the Almanor region, 2.9 earthquake. I don't know if this is, uh, let's see if it's showing up on any seismographs here. That was at 2158, so that's been a little while. Uh, it's been almost an hour or so ago, but uh, let's see what we got. Automatic status review. So uh, who knows if uh, it's going to be a legit earthquake or not. Well, looks like it is. Uh, nobody's got to it yet in terms of the uh, uh, you know, a seismologist reviewing it, but uh, uh, maybe they'll get to it here sometime tonight. Either way, it's underneath uh, the area. But not much. It's at a negative depth here, but that could be adjusted accordingly once it's reviewed. All right, let's see what else we got here across the area. 
Pacific Northwest relatively empty of earthquakes. That's because it's a weekend here. And most of the time, uh, USGS will not show anything up here uh, of the microquake level. But uh, surprisingly, there's a couple up here on the map. 1.3 and a uh, 2.4 today. Let's check out the trimmer activity here along the Cascadia. Uh, let's see what we have here. Zero. Nada. No trimmers whatsoever here. So that uh, a little bit of a slowdown there across the Cascadia in terms of trimmer activity. Nothing going on there for the uh, Yellowstone region. But let's just double check. I want to. I want to verify. Looks like some. Uh, it looks like some heavy duty wind up there. See the darker blue lines. See that's either wind or magma movement. I don't think it's magma movement because we'd be looking at uh, a whole lot of earthquake activity as well. So we'll double check the windy map here. See what we got for uh, the weather up there just to verify that that's what we're seeing. Oh yeah. Uh, certain areas across the uh, Yellowstone region. Over here, way over to the east, looks like some uh, 34 miles per hour. I don't need knots. Uh, 30, 30 miles per hour here across the area, Lake Yellowstone. Uh, more so over across the eastern areas here, up to 40 mile per hour winds. But uh, that's probably what we're seeing there, some wind uh, being picked up across the area. Even the east entrance showing a lot of wind for that uh, uh, seismograph station. Uh, Texas out in the oil fields getting hit with uh, quite a bit of earthquakes recently. A couple of earthquakes down here across the uh, Pleasanton area. This is, uh, you know, it, it's out there in some oil fields. There may be some older fault systems out here, but uh, uh, the majority of these earthquakes that we've seen here throughout the decades are strictly related to the wastewater disposal uh, operations and fracking operations out here across the state of Texas has been proven. Uh, there's been graphs out here showing the relationship between the oil boom and earthquake activity, right? Just uh, a lot of people in denial. Uh, here's some uh, earthquake out activity outside of Pecos, Texas. You have to really zoom in here to see these wastewater disposal ponds. There's a nice little view, oil rigs and holding tanks out there. Um, and there, you know, there's so many earthquakes that happen out here, um, due to all the, uh, the man-made, uh, with, withdrawal of oil and, and uh, natural gas and whatnot. So it's, uh, it, that's just, that's the facts there. Earthquakes are going to be in the future here for, uh, Texas for quite a while. Uh, let's see, Oklahoma, New Madrid seismic zone, a couple of earthquakes from this morning, uh, you know. This area very capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. The USGS has a uh, a decent amount of information on it. Uh, it looks like, you know, back in uh, 1811, 1812, we had a series of large earthquakes, uh, anywhere from 7.5 up to what they're saying is maybe an 8.1 around 1811, 1812. Now, the regular occurrence interval, I was trying to find this for you guys earlier, uh, runs about every 500 years. So if we look prior to the 1811-1812 period, uh, there was uh, similar events back in 1450 and then back in 900. So it looks like uh, regular intervals run about 500 years. It's only been over 200 years since uh, our last event, but who knows? You know, we weren't also uh, withdrawing all that uh, um, oil, and natural gas from the land out here around the region. Uh, and, of course, that may have uh, may have an effect, you know, on the strain out here. We may see things build up sooner or it may uh, divert some uh, activity out here, maybe some earthquake activity in, in various other areas. But uh, New Madrid Zone is a, a result here, and there's a couple different theories. They're not specifically sure on what is causing the earthquake activity out here. Um uh, but they're stating here that it's a series of poorly defined faults buried deep underground, which run parallel to the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, it lies over the Real Foot Rift, uh, which is an ancient subterranean structure that formed during the attempted breakup of the North American Plate. Uh, that was over 750 million years ago. Uh, and that's just one theory. There's a, there's a number 
of different theories out here that, uh, uh, you know, could be the culprit as to why uh, this earthquake activity is occurring. Uh, some people even state that it could have something to do with the uh, Mississippi there. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to go strictly into that. It's definitely worth a read uh, if you got some time to check out those articles on the New Madrid Seismic Zone. You know, 7.5 to an 8.1 earthquake out there. In modern times, uh, that would be uh, not good. Uh, it would devastate many states out here. So a couple earthquakes there. Just letting us know that the uh, fault system is still very much alive. But, uh, you know, who knows? I don't know if it's going to be in the next 300 years or maybe the next 100. Who we really know? We don't really know. All right. Uh, some deeper activity here into the Izu Trench once again. 306 miles deep for that four-pointer. Uh, looks like a little bit of adjustment following that deeper movement quake up here across the northern edge of this plate boundary. Um, underneath the uh, Japan region there for a 4.2. That's fairly visible here on this map as well. Uh, older movement there across the uh, Lucian Trench here in the red circles. Not a whole lot of newer activity down here across New Zealand for now. It looks like a 3.3 though um, on the plate boundary just off the North Island coast here. One of the more recent quakes. Aside from that, deeper activity here into the Tonga Trench. Older Earthquake activity here across the Vanuatu area and the Solomon Islands. A little bit of migration here across the Java Trench in the last 24 hour, hours, but really nothing major. Uh, Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out the Big Island. See what's going on out here. Uh, really nothing major. Got some twos underneath the area. Pahala, very typical into the deeper regions underneath this region here. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Deeper areas underneath this uh, uh the region of uh, pahala the kilauea volcano not seen uh, too much earthquake activity out here man i wish i had my voice back it's so i just feel off center here you know it's uh it's really weird so not a whole lot of activity there across the uh, big island for now alaska up here very minimal movement really nothing a major concern puerto rico area seeing a handful of earthquakes out here a lot from yesterday and uh, quite a bit here from today as well in the two and three range that uh, should continue for a little while as long as we see elevated seismic activity here across the middle America trench, which it looks like we're still seeing uh, uh, kind of following a trail up here from the middle America trench northward. Notice these, uh, <coughs> notice these uh, red color rings here indicating older activity, the white rings indicating newer activity. So, Older movement has been working its way up the plate boundary to where we're seeing the California activity right now. Uh, so just be on guard. Definitely seeing a, a little bit of adjustment take place out here across Southern Cal. And, uh, you know, two felt earthquakes there in the same location. I think it's noteworthy uh, to keep an eye on Southern California. Uh, just in general, you know, over the past three months or so, we've seen elevated seismic activity out here uh, all across various regions of uh, the southern portion of the state. Uh, let's see, anything major going on out in the Atlantic? Pretty quiet. Some older activity there in Iceland. So, we'll kind of see uh, what happens here overnight. Minimal movement there across the Mediterranean. Uh, dipping down here into almost a B flare category. That's uh, fairly low. Low grade sea flare, it looks like, but uh, sometimes when it's super low, we'll see this dip below that level. I don't know if we're going to, though, or not, but uh, I'm not really expecting any major solar storms here uh, for a little while. Uh, the sunspots out here have dwindled away, and uh, there's not a whole lot of le left of them out there. If we look at the magnetic complexity here of the sunspot area, uh, latest imagery shows us that uh, it's continuing to drift off here across the western limb. And uh, we got further decay going on here across that sunspot region. Here's a couple here across the eastern limb. Some older sunspots that were out here a couple weeks back on the earth-facing side of the sun. But uh, uh, let's see what they look like. Do we have any recent image? I guess this is somewhat recent. But these have diminished. Uh, there's not a whole lot of deep, dark core color that they once had back over here. Um, 
when they were on the far side of the sun, a little bit more off the western limb. So this area is dying. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything significant coming around the eastern limb for a little while. Um, so that's why I say we're going to see a little bit of quiet, a little quiet period here. But there is a little bit of magnetic structure here. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to look at it as it comes back uh, into view. A little flaring going on there. A little sea flare activity from that departing sunspot. Really, really nothing major, though. No major roars in the forecast there, folks. Hopefully, we can get that to change, right, for the Aurora Watchers. Uh, current day one outlook here. This is for Sunday. Um, tomorrow, site risk here for some severe weather. Uh, got a 5% chance here for some tornado activity out there across the area. Wichita Falls, Lawton, uh, Sweetwater, Texas included in that. Wind and some health. Well, not a whole lot of health threats out there. Just mainly tornado and wind activity uh, potentially uh, for the day tomorrow. So watch for that severe weather. After that, um, well, this is uh, this still shows uh, Sunday into Monday here. This is, I guess, this is more on the day for Monday uh, during the day. Uh, tornado wind, and a little bit of hail threat on there as well. Maybe this could be overnight. Looks like Sunday into Monday overnight. But uh, let's check out the GFS models, see what we have. Uh, some moisture being pulled up into this area, it looks like. Again, Sunday night, uh, early Monday morning as well. So that could be a, definitely a nighttime event. Early Monday morning into the day on Monday for some severe weather chances there across the area. Texas northward, a lot of rain headed to those guy, uh, to those states. Here in California, uh, another cold system out here. Looks like we're going to get a decent rainmaker finally. Here for Northern California. I've been watching the storm system out here. Uh, supposed to hit us maybe midweek coming up around Wednesday or Thursday. Some decent rainfall accumulated precipitation amounts there for California. And it uh, looks like that may be uh, um, the story for a little while out here. Let's check out the total accumulated precipitation runs. Look at that. California getting soaked. Uh, of course, that is the coast range. We're looking at maybe over a foot. Uh, rainfall accumulation here. It looks like a, almost an atmospheric river type event. Um, a little bit of that dipping down into the uh, Sacramento Valley, so we'll take it. We'll take anything we can get, actually, at this point. It's been pretty dry so far. Uh, the rest of the country, as you can see there, uh, some rainfall. As far as snowfall, uh, total snowfall out there. Of course, uh, oh yeah, California out here. Look at the northern valley, or uh, Siskiyou Mountains, uh, northern Sierra Nevada Mountains there. They're talking about maybe, oh, lots and lots of feet up there. Probably uh, a number of feet of snow from these systems that are coming in. That's kind of white. That's way up the chart, way off the chart here, actually. Um, and aside from that, uh, yeah. But, of course, this is all subject to change, right, in terms of long-term models. But, uh, hey, maybe uh, a little bit of snow out there for the ones that uh, want it. Let's see, uh, seismograph stations out here, pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on for now, but, uh, you know, things can pop up out of the blue. Appreciate all the comments there coming in about uh, feeling this earthquake down there around the Fontana area. And just a friendly reminder here to keep an earthquake plan, make an earthquake plan, and uh, keep it, you know, stored up in your memory uh, because anything could happen at any given time. It could happen at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. And uh, the last thing you want to do is start panicking, figuring out what to do here. So always make sure you got some type of earthquake plan for the family, co-workers and whatnot. If you're working, it's uh, pretty important out there for sure. Uh, and who knows, you know, nobody knows exactly when the big one's going to happen out here. But an 8.1 is in the forecast. Now that forecast could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. It could be in 20 years, but it's been building, folks. We're well overdue out here. So every day is a second closer to uh, some big time activity out here stay safe we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning for the sunday morning update hopefully i'll be miraculously cured by then i'm not counting on it uh, i've been trying to i don't know it seems like i had a couple spoonfuls of honey earlier it almost seems like it made me worse 
and some local honey as well. It's not from the store. Uh, but yeah, that's really weird. Normally, honey is a good uh, good cure for all sorts of stuff, but it uh, almost seems like it made it worse today. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Enough about me. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe.